Welcome to episode two of the Mad Fuzzy Podcast. I am your host, Marta. I am coming to you from Knox, Maine, where I live with my handsome man and my two dogs, Truffle and White Dog. Um, you can find me on social media. I am most active on Instagram, at Mad Fuzzy. I also am on Ravelry as Mad Fuzzy. And we have a Ravelry group, the Mad Fuzzy Podcast Group which is growing very quickly, and I'll tell you more of the exciting news in just a moment. Uh, you can email me at madfuzzy at gmail.com. You can also like this video or subscribe to this channel or both. Um, we now know that I have the ability to put out not only one, but two episodes, so I hope that you will trust that I can do three and subscribe. Um, I'm trying to improve on every episode, so if there is something I can do to make my podcast better, uh, please let me know in the comments below. Let me know what you're thinking about the podcast and if you enjoyed watching it. I watch a lot of podcasts. Uh, I will digress for a second. I am a cheesemaker, and so part of my job is very monotonous, and I package and sticker, and so I have podcasts kind of going in the background. It's like coworkers that don't get yelled at for standing around talking about knitting because I have no other coworkers. It's just me. Um, so it's nice to have all these podcasters there during my day talking about knitting and inspiring me, uh, even when I'm doing something as simple as putting a sticker on a package. So I, podcasts are really near and dear to my heart, and I feel like I spend a lot of time with other podcasters. So. That was really one of my major motivations behind starting my own podcast. I enjoy them so much. I want to contribute to this community. Um, and I hope you enjoy my podcast as much as I enjoy um, all the wonderful podcasters out there. But that also means that because I watch a lot of podcasts, I will reference a lot of podcasts and hopefully some that you've never heard of and some that you have. But I have a very long subscription list on my phone of podcasts and I will share those as we kind of go through episodes. Um, so it is just me and the dogs home today. Uh, Heath, that's my hands, man. He is at work. And so I am the most exciting human in the house. And so they may come up here and, and hang out. Truffle is, she's laying over there on a pile of pillows looking adorable. Uh, that's our, um, our little labby mix. She's, she's not so little, she's 75 pounds. But then we also have a white shepherd, which is white dog. Um, who's hanging around downstairs patrolling, you know, making sure nothing goes by the windows that she doesn't know about. But hopefully they'll both be pretty quiet this episode. Um, if they aren't, I'll have to stop and fix them. I've already had to start and stop a couple times because the house phone keeps ringing. So fingers crossed that the house phone doesn't ring. I'm having, I silenced my cell phone, but the house phone, eh. who has a house phone? I guess we do. That's rural Maine for you. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about our, our Ravelry group, which by the way, is growing so rapidly. I cannot believe it. Um, we have 11 members in the group right now. 11 wonderful people have stopped by and decided to join. Um, three of which have introduced themselves in the introductions thread. So thank you so much to those three. Um, I had said on the last podcast that I would give away a skein of yarn when we reached 100 introductions. So, um, because we're only at three, I, I haven't picked the skein of yarn yet. I'm going to leave you on another cliffhanger here. Um, I haven't picked it out. I think I'm going to stop by my local yarn store and see if there's something there that's super special and maybe very main made. I might dye up a special skein of Mad Fuzzy for you. I just, I haven't decided yet and we're nowhere near a hundred. Um, so, you know, you could, you could make me go faster if, uh, if more people got in there and introduced themselves. Right now, we just got to get to 100, and I'm giving away that skein. Um, but thank you to the three that did. Um, I read every single one, and uh, I realized, though, I commented on the first one. I realized that if I do that, then I'm going to be in there all the time, and it'll screw up the, the randomly generated number. So I am not going to be commenting on those first 100 introductions. I am reading them. I am loving them. Thank you so much. You guys are the best. Um, and thanks for, for watching the podcast as well. And uh, so I will start commenting probably after we get through 100 just because that'll be done. Maybe I'll go back and comment on those, those first 100. But I am reading them and I appreciate them so much. Um, 
We still have the um, hashtag all I talk about is socks. That's still going on. There's not much in there. I might have to kind of fill it in and get people excited about that. I've been sort of bad in my own Ravelry group. It's been a really busy week for cream cheese. We make cream cheese at the farm I work at, and uh, it's just been a, a big week for sales, and I've been very busy, so um, I haven't gotten a lot of time to sort of flush out those threads, so any help I can get would be fantastic. So that's really all I have about the administrative stuff. Uh, let's talk about knitting. Yeah, knitting. And uh, true to form, I have nothing but socks. Um, but I do have a finished object. I bet you can't guess. Well, first, I'm, before I bring these out, um, we went to Boston over the weekend. Uh, we went down there for uh, a Nick Cave and the Bad Seed concert. Uh, my boyfriend, he really wanted to to see them and I'm not a huge fan of the band so I told him spend the money you would spend on my ticket on a really really awesome ticket for you and I'll drive back you know and and we'll drive down together so I got to ride down there and I've got plenty of knitting time and then found a parking spot near the theater he went to the theater and I went to a coffee shop I had googled um, to make sure that they were open late and they were it was the thinking cup and it just so happened that it was right across the street from the Boston Commons. So I got an iced coffee and walked over there and knit in the park and people watched. And when it got too dark, I went back to the coffee shop and had another coffee. Because uh, I was driving back. And uh, it was a, a vanilla ginger latte. It was just out of this world. And she did the little hearts on the top of it. And out here, we just get Dunkin'. You know, we've got a couple Dunkin' places. There's no real good coffee shops. At least not that I go to usually driving a big truck and on the road and trying to trying to get from here to there as quickly as possible so um to have that heart shape in the top of my latte and the foam I felt so fancy I was like this is why you come to the city this is this is pretty awesome so I sat there and knit and uh, I felt like I was in a living Instagram photo it was wonderful and people watched and they had great little tarts and delicious baked goods and Heath called me when the concert was out and we met up and I drove back, but I got lots of knitting time. So I finished, yeah, now we're gonna get into that finished object. That was a huge lead up to these. I finished, oh my goodness, I am so happy about these. I finished my Mad Fuzzy Test Yarn socks. Oh my goodness. So I finished these, kitchen them up. This is the Mad Fuzzy Test Yarn that I got back from the mill that was a little underspun. I'll get a little closer for you. Um, I dyed it myself. These are kind of just a standard vanilla sock for me. They've got a, a 20 row cuff. They're two by two ribbing. I make a really long leg. Um, and then because it was a, a low twist, it was 100% wool, no nylon content. Um, I put in heel and toe string, which is a, a nylon content based uh, string you can buy at your yarn store. I did that in the, the toes and the heels and I, I did two different colors just because I thought that would be fun. Um, I really like how these turned out. These are going to go into my box of socks cow. Um, that is hosted by uh, Kristen of Yarngasm who I watched a bit of her episode to psych myself up today. That is a fantastic podcast. I'm sure everyone has heard of it. She's 200 and something episodes in so you've got a lot to catch up if you haven't um, I recommend binge watching it's a phenomenal podcast she's really an idol of mine and really kind of what I base a lot of of my podcast what I want it to be off of so um finished object I have been doing what I call that uh, the memory sock garland hashtag memory sock garland and I really wanted to do a memory sock for for this pair but unfortunately, I did not leave myself enough yarn. So I started it last night and I knit the cuff and ran out of yarn. I was like, this is not gonna work. So I didn't want an extra small one. So this one's just not gonna go um, on my memory sock garland, but they are gonna go in my box of socks and they are going to be so awesome. I have uh, a faux, which you saw last week. Um, this is the one you saw it last time. Um, this is my 80s sock, which is a Diamond Select footsie. This sock is 60 stitches on 2.5 millimeter needles. Uh, just a classic vanilla sock 
with my heel flap and gusset construction. And due to a potluck and my Boston trip and just a couple really nice evenings, I have made it to the toe decreases. So I will be done with this by today. I, I don't know why I didn't finish it and have two FOs for this episode, but honestly, I think it's because I was casting on other things. So um, I was just kind of trying, I tried to do my memory sock garland, which that took up my time last night. That was kind of disappointing, but I will make one out of this, this 80s sock because uh, I have plenty of this left over. In the spirit of kind of digging out old projects and finishing it, I did dig out an older sock that I really, I should finish. It's so simple, um, but for some reason I just, I never went to the second sock. I mean, I rarely get second sock syndrome, but on this one I did. Uh, this is a color work sock. I'll move this little string here so you can see that gorgeous color work. So this is a color work sock. This uh, is a pattern, it's free on Ravelry. Um, and, uh, and it just gives you this little piece of it. And I, I kind of just did my normal sock. Um, and I love it. It's, it's, you know, inexpensive yarn is my first color work experience. Uh, this is drops fable. This is stroll. Um, I got crap on it. There we go. This is stroll fingering. Um, and so I am to the cuff on the second one. I just didn't do the color work and it's such an easy chart. I don't know why. And then once you get past this little piece of chart work, it's a normal sock. And the yarn was really pleasant to work with. So I think I'm going to pick this back up and, and keep working on that as well. Um, this is housed in a bag that I haven't shown you um, because it's just been kind of living in this bag and languishing. So this is another Erin Lane bag um, that I got for Christmas. I got both of them at the same time. It does have two handles. So it does fully clothes. It is a larger bag than, I mean, look at this size of my head. I have a bag head now. So um, it, it could be a, a shawl size bag, but I got one of the small and one of, I'm guessing this is medium. But I love this fabric even more. I know, pink, not pink. So that's what that's living in. Uh, my handsome man, he brought up the other day that I had not knit him a sock in forever. The last socks I had made for him were out of what they called a memory yarn. It was a high spandex content. I don't think there was any wool in it. Um, he's really hard on his socks. He was working in a kitchen, so they would get wet and smelly. And I thought wool was maybe just not the right material for him. But he really never wore them. And I don't know, most knitters, you know, if, if we don't see people wearing and using our knit goods, we assume you don't like them and that you're not gonna wear them. So I thought that he really just didn't like knitted socks. So the other day he was, he was kind of complaining that I hadn't made him socks in a while. And I said that, you know, I, I thought you didn't like knitted socks and it apparently was not the case. And so I've decided the next pair is going to be knit for him. So I got out, um, a very similar yarn to that memory yarn. I think it was a good choice for him. Um, and caked it up and it was a pain. Oh my goodness, it just felt weird and didn't go on the ball winder right. And I made a huge tangle, but I finally got it caked up and I cast on. I haven't divided onto the needles or anything like that. I've literally just put 60 stitches on a needle and I'll divide it up into my other two DPNs. So I, I'm not even gonna show you that, but I am telling you that I am working on something for my handsome man as requested. So you'll be seeing that. I did cast that on. Um, and I also need to work on my Blue Mercury sock. But I have other things in, in mind for other projects. So maybe I'll just cast on all the socks and then I can work on all the socks because I will be done with that 80 sock in no time. And I have a feeling that color work sock's not gonna take very long either. And maybe I'll get more knitting time again. Maybe we'll go on another road trip. Road trips are great for knitting time. Um, yeah, so, um, I want to talk a little bit about Mad Fuzzy news. There's been ex some exciting things happening at Mad Fuzzy, um, the yarn company that I am starting, uh, which is 100% raised, milled, and dyed yarns right here in Maine. Um, I got my logo finished. 
I have been working with a wonderful woman. Um, she's most active on Instagram as at foxes in boxes. She spells that a little funny, so I put it down here for you. It's a very cute Instagram, but she does this like, I don't know, kind of uh, modern tattoo kind of style. Um, and when I saw her work on Instagram, and I work with her at, a, at, a, at another job I have, because, I don't know, I just don't like free time. And uh, she had this style that I really enjoyed. I really liked how she, her lettering, her color, she does a lot of ink and, and watercolor. And so I had said something, you know, I'd really love to have a pinup sheet for my logo. And, uh, you know, we worked together that evening and that next morning she woke me up with the first draft. So she was very excited about the project as well. And, uh, you know, a few weeks later I had it in my hand and it's gorgeous. So I'm, I'm in, inserting a picture of my new logo right here. Isn't it amazing? Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. It's so awesome. I'm so happy. I'm probably messing up my mic. Sorry about that. Um, I'm so happy. It's so perfect. I could not, even if I could draw, I couldn't have done it better. She's a genius. So I'm, I'm extremely happy. This also means that I get to start kind of putting all the pieces together, the business cards, the yarn labels. Um, I'm a, I've been working on my different colorways. So uh, once all these tiny little loose ends get sort of wrapped up and tied together, I can start really listing my yarn and, and selling my yarn. So I'm hoping to have that available to, bold to you all very soon. So exciting news in the mad fuzzy world. Uh, also exciting. Uh, we moved to the Knox area just a few months ago. We had we lived in Maine the whole time, but we had lived a little bit further towards the coast uh, in a little town called Union, and now we live in Knox. So I had sort of looked to see what was available as far as knitting groups, and a co-op um, called the Marsh River Co-op, which is down in Brooks, it's about five minutes from me, it's not far whatsoever, has a knitting and spinning group that is every other Friday. And so I had called up to see which Fridays it was on Friday, and they said, it's today. So I came home, ate a quick dinner, loaded my wheel in the car, grabbed a couple projects, and went down there. And it is a phenomenal group of women. They are extremely knowledgeable. They all pretty much own sheep and, and are working in raw fleeces and spinning, and they all brought wheels, and it was just, it was just amazing. And I, I, time flew. I didn't get home until way later than I had intended. My Kromsky wheel needed a serious tune-up, and I had not brought the the hex key I needed to tighten it, so I didn't get as much spinning done as I had hoped. I came home and did tighten it and tuned it and oiled it. So next week, which will be this this upcoming week, there'll be a group. Um, I should have my wheel up and running and get some spinning done, so I'll have some spinning for the next podcast. Um, I mostly just knit on socks and chatted with the ladies. They were so knowledgeable and so interesting. And there was only the four, but it sounded like there are a couple people who come and go. So that was really exciting as I'm, I'm kind of growing my non-internet knitting friends as well as my internet knitting friends. So I'm, I'm really excited that I have knitting friends. I've been kind of knitting in a vacuum for a while. I've been spinning in a vacuum. I'm, I'm so excited. I think I'm going to learn so much from my fellow crafter. So this is really exciting. I have, I have a knitting group. Um, another exciting thing that happened, um, on Father's Day, which was this last Sunday, we went to, um, a handsome man's grandparents' house for Father's Day brunch, and all the aunts were there, and all of his aunts and grandmother craft. They're quilters, they're knitters, um, I don't think any of them are spinners, but, uh, grandma hand quilts, and the, the one aunt is a, an avid quilter, the other one's an avid knitter. And so I got to see grandma's craft room and I just fit in, you know, when you can talk craft to other people, you know, you're instantly part of the same group, you know, and you can smell the, the craft on each other and you just know that you're the, you're of the same make and it's wonderful. So they were talking about how she, um, well, one of the aunts had picked up a sewing machine at some sale. There's always a sale here. I think it may have been a church sale. And it was $2, but because she knew the woman, she had gotten it for free. 
and apparently the only thing that it is missing is a case. So I am hopefully going to get a sewing machine and start to sew. I do know how to sew. I took many classes when I was a little kid. I sewed many outfits for myself. I sewed my friend's high school prom dress for a senior prom. And, uh, and then I, my sewing machine went one way and I drove the other way and I hadn't sewn since. So the fact that I am going to have a sewing machine means that there is probably going to be a whole new segment on this podcast about sewing, which is really exciting. And grandma promised me that if I came over for dinner and brought my handsome man, that she would teach me how to hand quilt. So that's, that's cool. I love learning new things. Um, currently this studio up here where I am is, it's, it's pretty big, but because we are also living in it while the cabin is being built across the way, um, I do not have as much room as I will when we actually move our bed and all of our clothes and everything over, over to the cabin. So I will have a much larger space and I hope to definitely have a sewing area um, with my sewing machine, the sewing table, as well as the whole dye studio and everything up here. But big studio plans. Um, I got to build a cabin first. When I build a cabin, I can have a bigger studio. And that's, that's a pretty good motivating factor. So, sorry, I'm my show notes are over here. I actually wrote myself show notes. It's been going well, I think. I feel fairly, fairly on topic. So I don't have any Yarny acquisitions this week, and I really don't have any acquisitions that I purchased. Um, I have a wonderful friend. Her name is Arlene, and she is the cheesemaker behind Imaginary, which makes a hullable blue cheese that is out of this world. I think it is the best blue cheese I have ever eaten, um, and I honestly could eat whole wheels of it at a time because it is phenomenal and out of this world and goes on everything. Burgers, salads, ah, oh. mm. I should probably get some lunch. I'm thinking about blue cheese too much. But you can find her at Imagine Dairy. She's, I believe, got an Instagram. Um, and you can find her at farmer's markets throughout the state. I know for sure she is at the Camden Market on Saturdays. But she is also an amazing potter, um, cheesemaker and potter. And so the other day she sent me a message that said she had a gift for me. And when I saw her at market, she gave me this. It's a yarn bowl. Isn't this phenomenal? I have wanted one of these for so long and never, just never did it. Never made one for myself, never ordered one. But I, I have a white shepherd, and so that hair is everywhere. And if a yarn ball rolls, I, it comes back with more white dog than it started with. So to have a little yarn bowl is going to be phenomenal. Look at that blue. I just love that blue. So that was my acquisition for the week. I just, oh, I love it. I got gifted. And I'm definitely going to use it. It's so perfect for sock size, balls of yarn and whatnot. So that concludes my knitting segments. Um, if you were only here for the knitting, thank you so much. I hope you come back in two weeks for episode three. Again, hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Let's, uh, let's go on this journey together. Um, and I will talk about my life in general a little bit. Um, we went to a couple social events, which is rare for us. We're kind of homebodies, but we went out to a wedding and then I went to a potluck at another farm that is in Monroe, Maine, which is called Toddy Pond Farm. One of their workers was having a potluck and oh, the food there was phenomenal. And it was all so local. Everyone had grown every piece of it. You know, the, pea, the beans and the bean salad were grown by the person who made it. The seaweed salad, that guy harvests seaweed for a living. Um, and then I had brought some, some short ribs from Springdale Farm. And yeah, it just, it was a really amazing dinner and really amazing people. Just more young people doing really cool things in Maine. Um, so that was nice to get out a little bit, but we've kind of been home hanging out. We tilled up our, our second garden. Uh, we're going to put more seedlings in that second garden. That was fun. I got to use the rototiller. We got a pretty big one that drives itself. And, you know, I was... I was having a blast with the heavy machinery, um, and uh, and yeah, so it was a it was a pretty good social week. Um, I didn't get much homesteading craft done. We've got a freezer full of tomatoes that need to become sauce, and um, Betsy will be back. Betsy is my my boyfriend's mom. She'll be back this next weekend for a few days to kind of check in with us, and I am. 
<sighs> Hopefully she's going to help me with this garden. I need a little bit of advice. Um, she is the green thumb in the family. I, I struggle with houseplants. I figure the more I can learn about gardening, the better. Because right now I'm kind of terrible at it. So she'll be back for some hand-holding, thank goodness. Um, and it should be a pretty, pretty laid-back week at the farm. Lots of cheese making, but um, I had half the day off today. It allowed me to film this podcast and hopefully edit it and get it up. Uh, thank you again for watching and tuning in. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your week. And uh, enjoy your knitting. Bye.